Where do you think this, you know, 2023, 24 team stacks up against some of obviously the great iconic rosters that, that this organization has had over the years? It's so difficult because when you compare these teams, like to other Celtics teams in the past, most of them are, you know, 10 years ago, all of them plus years ago. Point, right. So even when you compare them to like uh, the big three Celtics with Rayon, Paul Pierce and KG, it's just such a different era. And then let alone the fact in like the 80s when you have Larry Bird and such Maxwell and all of these dudes, like it's just completely different eras that it's really difficult to kind of pinpoint if these teams matched up who would win. Because from a math perspective, like Boston is probably being these 80 Celtics teams because they're going to be taking 43s a game. Yeah. And th that 80 Celtics team, although they have Larry Bird and they have all these Hall of Famers, they're just not going to get up as many shots. And, and over time, over a seven-game series, that's probably going to even out to the 2024 Celtics favor. So I think in, in Celtic history, I mean, in my lifetime, I think it's the best team I've ever seen. Like I really started to become a fan of them, I would say, around the, that big three era. So mm -hmm. that team was fantastic, a bit forward-thinking about like Ray Allen who was looked as a um specialist at that point where he's coming on to Boston he knows his roles can be completely different than it has been in the past and it's just this Boston team kind of has multiple versions of Ray Allen because everyone can shoot of course not maybe as great as him but there's just so many different parts on this team that they have different ways to attack you with whether it's one-on-one -on -one with Tatum and Jalen Brown whether it's Derek White who can make a three off the dribble or he do it Green, day his movement off on kind of the X factor who we didn't see basically the entire playoffs is Porzingis. If Porzingis would have been held through this playoff run, I mean, they, they could have gone sixteen and zero. Who knows? Maybe yeah. fifteen <laughs> more, like sixteen and one. They they did lose that one game against Miami with him, so I guess at best sixteen and one. Mm -hmm. But that's really the key piece because the Celtics did all of this. We we're kind of thinking of them in this way, and we didn't even see Porzingis. Like we. The Dallas Mavericks, in my opinion, in this series, this this five game stretch was the worst uh, from a points per game perspective. It was the worst five game stretch of the Celtics had all season long, and they still won a majority of these games by double digit points. Mm -hmm. So that just showed how locked in this team was defensively. And now you had KP to the mix that, of course, could hit threes. He could post up, attack mismatches around the rim, getting offensive putbacks. It just unlocks a new layer to the team that we really didn't get to see, unfortunately. I think when I go back in just in the last like five to 10 years or so, or at least since we have a new champion, the Warriors, I would put above them. Them in the 2020 Lakers, I think is a real discussion. I think mm -hmm. LeBron and Anthony Davis, they were just both at such a high, high, like probably top five, both of them locks. And then you had just as good of role players with KCP, with Alex Caruso, um, Danny Green, and you had backup bigs like, like Dwight Howard, um, JaVale. Like they just had so much depth and so much, um, like the fit was just so well between right. all of the guys on top of having two top five players. So I think that's a real discussion. But to me, they would be in that top three with the KD Warriors, the 20 Warriors in this 16. Definitely. It's a shame they traded all that away for Russell Westbrook. Um, yeah. uh, like you said, the fit there was so perfect. Um, but I I'm also glad you brought up Porzingis' injury because, again, the biggest – excuse people are trying to make and we even did a live stream right after game five and people were in the chat saying that you know there's gonna have to be an asterisk on this championship everybody they played was hurt nobody wants to bring up the fact that they traded for chris app to be a pivotal part at really like unlocking this missoula ball concept to really having this full you know five out kind of offense he missed most of the playoffs um so you could make the you can put an asterisk you can want to you know say that there's you know, injuries in everybody, every single champion's run. That's a reality of playing sports. People are going to get hurt. Things are going to have to break one team's way. Luck plays a factor into winning anything, any individual championship. Um, so that, that type of argument is always annoying to see because it just feels so degrading for, for no reason. Um, like game one, first quarter, like imagine the Celtics had that for all these like five games how right. different this series, even though the Celtics won 4-1, how different this series could have really felt because that quarter one with Porzingis, I'm never going to forget. And the Jalen Brown shot in the third quarter, kind of that rainbow mid-range jumper to not seal the game, but give you just a little cushion. I think that brought it up to like a four or five point game with like a minute and a half left. So you just had like a, a second just to breathe because they could not score the basketball. Yeah. But that first quarter KP, 
that was basically what we were getting all season long, right? And then he goes yeah. down, and it's like, holy shit. I guess they're playing injured teams, but also they're banged up. Like, they don't have one of their most important players, too. Thank you.